All right, here we go. Uh, welcome to the Rescue and Revive Gospel Show. It's Pastor Dominic Denisi here of Rescue and Revive Ministries. And in our High Falls Rescue and Revive Ministry headquarters, we have our guest today is Rich Kanas. Did I say it right? Very close. I, I knew it was going to mess right it up. There. I knew it. Oh, okay, say it, say it one time, Rich. Kanaus. Kanaus. Yes, sir. Okay, Rich Kanaus. <laughs> All right, so Rich, uh, you are the owner of Unified Taekwondo. You got the, you got the t-shirt on. Right to represent. Yes, sir. yes sir. Let's before we get into unified Taekwondo, because even myself personally, I'd like to hear a little bit about your your testimony. I don't know that much about it. All I, I I've learned about where you attend, uh, where you fellowship, so on and so forth. And uh, so why don't you just take if you take a few minutes to just let the viewers, the listeners, hear about who Rich is and a little bit about your testimony. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, I know, yeah, we haven't talked about this, you know, too much. Yeah, I want to hear it. Yeah, absolutely. So I grew up, you know, as a kid, my parents yes. brought me to church. We went to First Bible, and, um, you know, I went all the way through. And around my teenage years, probably around maybe 10th grade or something like that, um, kind of fell off a little bit, um, you know, just being... You know, Very kid, common. Just yep. being a kid and whatnot, you know, you kind of just get busy with everything. And at the time, you know, obviously I wasn't as wise as I am now of, you know, how important it is, you know, to continue to follow Jesus sure. and just all aspects of your life. Right. Um, so, you know, you know, I fell away a little bit. Like, and the thing is, is I always knew that Jesus was with me. So I, I honestly did feel convicted during times where I was young and doing, you know, dumb things. You know, I always had that conviction, like, I know I shouldn't be doing this. And when I was about 22, mm -hmm. um, you know, just, you know, little things where it's like, okay, I got to make a change. Yeah. And just really recommitting myself, going back to First Bible. Um, and then I met my wife, and she actually attended Calvary Chapel Westside. Um, so, you know, she grew up in that church also. Um, so as we got together, mm -hmm. you know, we were... You know, we were kind of going back and forth, and we sure. were engaged, and you mm -hmm. know, just kind of praying about which, because you know, both churches were phenomenal, right. and we both loved them. So you know, it was tough for you know to leave one of them, but you know, obviously, we let the Lord just kind of put it on our hearts, and you know, we decided to go to Calvary Chapel West Side. We do uh, have a lot of friends, and still uh, are close with the people at First Bible as well. Yeah, and I, as I told you this morning, I found out that my my oldest child uh, coached. Grace and Truth Soccer. <laughs> yes, yes. So that's sir. A, that's been a great sports ministry for us. Uh, Grace and Truth. All my children uh, going through that sports ministry. It's, I love it because it's Saturday mornings. It's not a huge commitment. You could do it together as a family, so on and so forth. So, really great ministry there from First Bible. Now let's let's get into uh, Unified Taekwondo. Tell us a little bit. I, I you, you've had it for about seven years. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah. How, how did it start? Tell us what you do, so on and so forth. All right. So, um, my father actually was my instructor growing up. Okay. And he actually had a ministry through First Bible. So, you know, till I was about, you know, five years old until 22 years old, um, we did, you know, the ministry that was actually started by Mark Palma. I've heard of him. I know he does a lot. I know his son. I know they do. He does a lot of sports ministry, right? Dominican yep. Republic. He's, uh, he's, yep. He's in Dominican. His son and actually grandson and granddaughter are actually training. In, That's great. With me now. So, um, so we actually started the ministry through First Bible, and about 22, um, it kind of you know obviously, you know people get busy and they just couldn't sure. keep going, and I was I thought of it as a way to not only start a business that would hopefully one day be able to support my family and do what I love, sure. but ultimately, like I told you, is be able to reach people, you know, you know, through the word, like um, mm -hmm. be able to have that where you come into a business and you think you're going for Taekwondo, which you are, but you're also, you know, being a light to those that Correct. may not know, Correct. you know, so we actually started off my cousin had a gym in Hilton because at the time I didn't have enough money to really rent any of sure. to go. And uh, I started, you know, teaching classes out of there. And one of my students actually attended Spenceport Bible Church. And he said, oh, you know, the pastor used to do martial arts. We have a room upstairs right, that we right. can use. So Still there. 
Yep. Yeah, so Unified Taekwondo is still there too on the wall. It, the painting. Yep. Amen. So we were there for about six years. And, um, you know, obviously it was time to just kind of, you know, grow and get mm -hmm. to a new location. Uh, so we got a location in Henrietta. Um, we were there for two years. It wasn't, you know, the best storefront view, so it was kind of hard to grow. And, you know, we were just praying about when that lease was over, yeah. you know, whereabouts we would go. Obviously, we were in Spenceport, and I live in Brockport, so, you know, Henrietta was kind of a long hike for a lot of the students. But, you know, they were dedicated, and, you know, they kept coming. And we found, we finally found a spot in the mm -hmm. Tops Plaza in Slayton Avenue. Yeah, I know exactly, of course. So yep. we, um, we just opened up there two months ago. You did? Wait, well, okay, so I was just, I know where that is very well. Um, just was at that Tops. Where exactly in Slayton Place is it? So it's on the other side of Tops. And okay, it's where the diner is. Yeah, so it's closer to the road. We're in okay. between a hair we'll salon. Yep. And uh, a dog grooming place. Okay, great. Which we bring our dogs yeah. to. So we <laughs> we know them very well. Yeah. Yes. Great spot. That's a good, good spot. Yep. Um, and that town, I've been spending a lot of time in that area of the town. Mm -hmm. The ice cream place, the coffee shop, walk in the canal, so on and so forth. It's a really, really, I told you we're having an outreach there coming up through Rescue and Vibe Ministries on the, uh, the 29th. So looking forward to that. Hope we get good weather. Let me ask you this because now you're a family man. Yes, you're a young man, but now you're a family man, and you've been married to your wife, Allie, for how long again? Coming up on four years next four, month. Four years, you have a daughter. Now you're about to have another child in a couple weeks, correct? Yes, sir. How has that impacted you um, as a man of God, as a father, um, a husband? How has that all impacted you in general, and then how has that affected uh, Unified Taekwondo? Yeah, so... Um... And obviously, we were talking about, you know, I was working full time mm -hmm. and now I'm running a business full right. time. And, you know, the balance of obviously putting my family and my wife first, right. mm -hmm. but also still trying to, you know, be the provider that God right. wants me to be. So just that balance is tough. And obviously, you know, I have, you know, a wife who's, mm -hmm. you know, very understanding mm -hmm. and um, she just she helps me. And, you know, like we talk about, it's like we're a team. Through right. all of this so you know she's been a blessing mm -hmm. that helps me you know in the business and you know she does whatever she can on the back end so that's been a blessing and you know, my daughter Isabella who actually just turned 10 she's that's been great. training and uh, for about six years now Wow, she so, had black belts yet? not yet you know <laughs> she's she's she is um, she's very very good though she also uh, does cheerleading you know that takes up a lot, of, a time. lot of time so it's a big commitment but you know just you know, I think another blessing is my wife's been able to homeschool her. Yes, so that is a blessing. Just the freedom of you know being able to, um, you know, they can do, you know, their you school. Freedom. And, you got yeah. freedom. Yeah, I, I was watching something. Uh, I saw a statistic the other day in the 1970s. There was 130,000 homeschoolers in the United States. Now there's over six million. Wow. I, I mean, it just has yeah. boomed and blossomed. I mean, specifically what's going on in the school systems public school system, so on and so forth. You're, I don't think you're going to see that number decrease. I think you're just going to continue to see it increase. But yeah. how does that play in? You already said that's kind of helpful for you, is it not? Homeschooling for uh, being a businessman and so on, a family man, so on and so forth. That's helpful? Yes. Um, so you said your wife's a big support, kind of working behind the scenes, so on and so forth. She's going to have an adjustment coming up with another baby. So how about, talk about that support system. Uh, your wife, anybody beyond that, because I know as a as a business owner, as a pastor, ministry leader, father, you know, list goes on and on. How important is that support system, and 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 who are those that make up that support system for for Rich? Yeah, absolutely. So um, obviously, my wife is the biggest support, and just um, like I said, how flexible she is, and obviously, it's going to be an adjustment for both of us. Of course, and obviously, doing whatever I can do. You know, because even though I'm working and, you know, she was actually on bed rest uh, for a little while because, you know, possibly having the baby come early. Sure. You know, that, you know, even put a little bit more on my plate. But at the end of the day, you know, she's growing our child, which is more than, right. you know, I'm doing a lot. But what she's doing is even more important. So whatever I can do to help, whether it's staying up all night with right. the baby. To let Have you done rest. that before? No, not yet. <laughs> that's um, not easy. That's no, not easy yeah. To do. So, um, and yeah, just like what we were talking about the freedom, you know, I did, 
you know, I had a full time job, right? Um, for you know the last eight, you know, ten years, and right. you know, also at the same time, mm -hmm. running my martial arts business, yeah, you cool. know, initially by myself. Sure. Um, so just like trying to grow that, and you know, now I'm married and have one daughter and now another daughter you know it just um it becomes more strategic of how we are going to continue to work together that everything you know obviously family is the most important but um like i said she helps me a lot with running my business um and i've been you know in the martial arts uh training for 26 years mm -hmm. now so and i really think that this location that god has um you know provided for us in the tops plaza mm -hmm. We've had a lot of growth even within the last two months that, you know, you know, I am actually, I'm still doing some different side jobs because I was in construction. So just trying to, you know, making sure that I'm still the provider sure. and, you know, getting everything I need. And I was telling someone, um, you know, because now that I'm not working for a job, I'm not going right. to get this paid time. Yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be different. So trying to, you know, make sure I'm working really hard until the baby comes because I told, you know, whoever I'm working for, even my business and which has been another support system. I have a few uh, black belts, even my dad, um, mm -hmm. who actually, you know, was in the ministry at First Bible through Taekwondo. He comes at least once or twice a week and helps teach classes. So I told all my instructors, I said, hey, when the baby comes, we don't know when it's going to happen. When the baby comes, I'm going to take two to three weeks off. That's wise. That's and, very wise. And just, yeah. um, and I let all the parents know, like, you yeah. know, we're not exactly sure, but, you know, the schedule might change a little bit. But, you know, other than that, I can trust the people that are going to yeah, be teaching. Yeah, that's wisdom. I, I can tell you from experience, that's wise. I didn't necessarily do that um, with with all my children when they were born. You know, having six, of course, a little bit. And we had, <laughs> we had five really quickly together. Yeah. But, yeah, I know specifically for the last one, I, I don't think I did. It, that the, I think that's a great move to take two or three. And again, that's part of the freedom and flexibility you have as a business owner that, it, you know, you may, working for someone else, they may they may give that to you, but you still have to ask for approval, you know, yeah. so, so that's an advantage. How difficult is it to to get to, it's not only a simple question, how hard is it to get to church on Sunday? Because I'll tell you this, um, pastoring a church and even before, um, that, you know, overseeing this ministry, doing a lot of itinerant preaching, so on and so forth. How hard is it to keep Christ at the center? I mean, and I started off with attending church on Sunday morning because I see the flow of people. And I know in our church, you know, there's kind of like two waves. There's like the first wave, they make it there on time. Then within the next 20 minutes, there's the second wave. And that's just... After the singing comes. Well, yeah, a lot of times, <laughs> right? Sometimes it's kind of how it is, but I understand that. And, and I'm okay with that, Grace, you know, gracious about that. I understand families. I remember, you know, driving. I drove across town for 20 years to go to church, so on and so forth. How hard is it, though? Honestly, how difficult is it to, to try to keep God at the center, Jesus Christ at the center of your family, your business, so on and so forth, and part of that being, you know, regular church attendance? How difficult is that? So I think for me and my yeah. family, um, the attending church yeah. is actually um, – there's no really question of whether we're not going or are going. We always attend church because one of the reasons... It's not typical today. No, you know? no. And yeah. um, the one, you know, one struggle that I do have is my, you know, my personal maybe daily devotions are right. getting in the word, which yeah, yeah. sometimes, you know, lacks. And sure. obviously, you know, it's honest. we yeah. go through things where, you know, obviously the, the lives and busyness and mm -hmm. kids and, you know, mm -hmm. it's tough, but... You know, even, you know, I was talking to my wife who just encourages me, like, you know, I am the man of the household. So just mm -hmm. even being in the word in the morning, not just for me, but when my daughter comes down from, yeah. you know, she sees me in the word. Sure. And just trying to encourage her. But yeah. And we also, um, we teach, um, I teach second and third graders on Sundays. Oh, you do? At Calvary. So that's great. that is also so an you, encouragement. That's how, you know, that's how you know the betters. That's how you know Dawn. She teaches yeah. a lot. Yeah. So just getting in the word yeah. even, yeah. you know, obviously what my study is, that mm -hmm. helps me to really get in the word more and, uh, you know, just always going. And, you know, my daughter loves it. So now that she's 10 years old, mm -hmm. she loves, she's always there for two services. So she wants to help out the little kids. And sure. then, you know, the next service sure. she'll go into her class. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. And it, it, here, it sounds like it, what I say a lot of times is, and I've said this from the pulpit, if 
if Christians aren't going to church, how can you expect those that are lost to come to church? And, and my point in that is that statistically, the average churchgoer, Christian, however you want to categorize it, according to these Pew Research and Barna Research Group, before COVID, they only attended church two times a month. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what it is post-COVID, but i got to imagine it's less. Yeah. So I see this struggle, um, and I'm not saying this condemningly, but I see this struggle in just attending church. And then as far as midweek goes, um, I don't know how it is. I know West Side actually has you know booming church, but midweek even has been kind of almost eliminated, if not eliminated, a number of churches. Yeah. And so, but then I also hear you talking about doing your devotions at home, your kids seeing us. So there's this balance between church and home and both. But I think the time we live in, it's um, there's definitely a battle. You know, uh, as like I said this, if, if Wednesday goes, there's only one target left Sunday morning. You know what I mean? Before the church closes down. So yeah, it's just this really, really precarious times, interesting times we live in. Um, with that being said, uh, Rich, you talked a little bit about your father. Uh, we got Father's Day coming up. Yes, sir. Um, how instrumental was he uh, in your life to, to help lead you to Christ and maybe other people you mentioned like uh, Mark Palma, people people yeah. like that. Who were the people that influ influenced you that drew you to the Lord and drew you into this this calling and career as well? Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely my father. Um, he was He's a big reason I am who I am today. Um, especially his work ethic, mm -hmm. which, you know, I said, you know, you know, he worked probably 100 hours a week throughout wow. the week. And, you know, he maybe ne didn't necessarily, I didn't see him too much through the week. And I, mm -hmm. you know, I try to not do that now, you know. Right. But um, just he was always at, you know, class and, you know, teaching me to, you know, do the best I can. And, you know, bringing me, whether it was Taekwondo or church, no matter what, we didn't have a choice. Whether we... And obviously, sure. sometimes kids don't want to go to church. Of and, course. And, yeah, it's, just, it's natural. And sports, whatever, right. you want to just hang out outside, mm -hmm. especially with the nice weather coming. Right. But the thing is, is, you know, I we didn't have a choice. It wasn't, we're not, we're not going to, okay, I'm going to fight about it. There was no choice. Yeah, you made so it I, very clear. Right. So I think now even, just with everything I do, whether it's, you know, I work all day and then I got to teach class and then I got to mm -hmm. go home, it's like, it is what it is. And know God has just strengthened me and I just ask God every day to just continue to give me strength and to you know have patience even after that long day of mm -hmm. whatever it may be your father instilled a work ethic in you yes sir. He, he, he gave you he was a good example and when that that time I got to meet him when he came to the church I could tell he's got a great personality real deal guy it's huge huge um, yes, sir. and this will play on the radio before Father's Day too. It'll play. It'll, actually, that'll be the first first Sunday night. It'll play on the radio. Awesome. So perfect timing with that. Anyone else? Uh, you mentioned Mark Palmer, who I've never formally met, but I know his son uh, Ryan, yeah. and and I know uh, I know Ryan's father-in-law Tim Ford really well. Yep. They support yep. Wrestling Divine Ministries. I spoke there a few months ago, actually. So anybody else, Mark? Anybody else who uh, your dad was a major pivotal yeah. person for you? Anybody else? Yeah. So um, you know, definitely Mark too as well. Um, mm -hmm. I was a lot younger mm -hmm. um, at the time, but. Even his son, Ryan, has been a blessing. You know, mm -hmm. we actually attend his house every Friday for a life group. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah. and I was even talking to my buddy. Are they buddy. going Westside now, too? I uh, know. They're going <laughs> first Bible. No, no. Because so. you said I'm like, wait, all right, go ahead, continue. So, um, yeah, so I was even talking to my yeah. buddy who's 10 years younger than me, and I was telling him, it was like, I don't feel that much older than you, but having friends that are even a little bit older, sure. that can mentor you, sure. that are godly people. It helps. Um, so definitely yeah. Ryan. And even another big one is my father-in-law, uh, Tony Cintron. Great guy. Who's the Amazing assistant guy. pastor yep. over at New Beginnings. Yep. Um, he's just, he's a huge blessing. And, you know, there's just some people that um, would just give you the shirt off the back. He's definitely one I'd of them. He's, one. He's, he's really an amazing guy. I've always admired him. And, uh, the way he conducts himself as a man of God. And he, and he said something to me that I use still today. I, I have used it in all facets of ministry. I remember Pastor Tony saying to me, because um, we were in, I was a children's pastor for, yeah. for five years, and I remember talking to him. There were two things that were very profound, he said, but one in particular, he said, I never refer to uh, the Bible as stories. Um, I've taken, I've, I've, I own that. Mm -hmm. Every single time I refer to the Bible, I say the account of Jonah. The account of Genesis that was powerful to me. I just want to share that with you. Again, yeah. That that nugget of wisdom is very profound. Yeah, you know, and uncommon. So great. These are great men. 
Yes, sir. That yeah, surrounds you. Yeah. I think just having, obviously, if you're watching or whatever, just yeah. having guys that are older that can yeah. give you the wisdom. Obviously, having friends that you're the same age. And, yeah. you know, it is tougher sometimes because you have a lot of friends that maybe aren't in the word or, you know, really attending yeah. or following the way that you want them to. And, you know, having grace with them. Right. You know, grace is big. You know, because you want them. And I talk about it all the time. Like, you want your friends and family to be saved. Right. And, you know, just building that relationship mm -hmm. and just being the light and like just praying for him continuously because you you don't you know and people say you know maybe they're still young and you know we yeah. got a lot of time and but we don't know when jesus is going to be coming back so um really just trying to be a light continually um being gracious to them but also you know giving them the truth of what is going to happen if you you know don't um accept jesus in your life None. That's key. I was just looking. We have a Facebook live feed. A couple of our our guys over in Kenya, our ambassador awesome. from uh, Rescue Revive Ministries, Pastor Max, and so have some other people joining with us. Yeah, that's great words of wisdom and advice from you as well. And uh, the importance of disciple. That's organic discipleship. Mm -hmm. You know, life groups that happens and it's intentional. But then there's organic discipleship. Men that your father, you happen to inherit a great father-in-law, right? Mm -hmm. Your father. I mean, these are men that have heavily influenced you. And I notice in you, we don't have a whole lot of time left. We don't have, we got like five minutes. But I noticed in you, I can almost see this. It's like when people have, and I want more of it, by the way. I admit, I, there's, I, I want more of the fruit of self-control in every aspect of my life. I see that in you. I see that in your countenance. That's probably come from your father, Taekwondo, those type of things. Am I right in guessing that? Yes, sir. Yeah, I knew it. So that's, but I see that, man. It's like people wear that fruit of of self-control and that's something too that um you know is modeled often and then god develops that fruit that character inside of you so that's a blessing last thing i want to ask you about is we're running out of time well two things number one somebody's interested in learning taekwondo they know now you're a christian man you're a man of god how do they get started at unified taekwondo yeah absolutely so um you can text text me call me at my number um, what is that number it's 585-727-5786. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can uh, check us out on our website, which is tkdrocs.com, okay. tkdrocs.com. Um, and we give everyone two free classes, great. ages four up until 75. It's we fantastic. teach kids, adults, all ages. We're there uh, Monday through Saturday, six right. days a week. So um, Fantastic. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously anyone who's even thinking about it, um, I know, you know, it's tough. The kids have sports, they have school, they <laughs> a lot have, of activities. there's a lot of activities, yep. and, but it's just, I think, something that, you know, we don't take a break. We're year round. Mm -hmm. So even, you know, in between sports, I encourage, you know, uh, to bring the kids. And one thing I just, you know, God brought it to yeah. my remembrance right now that's really been heavy on my heart is I have a lot of parents and their kids you know are being bullied and even yeah. even just other parents that I've talked to and just how bad you know sometimes the way the school handles sure. you know picking on kids and you know we're actually going to be coming up with a um, an organic self-defense class it's it's going to be more of a realistic sure you know because a lot of the times you know you think of self-defense you know you grab this mm -hmm. you're not going to remember so no. you know it's you know, really building the confidence, learning sure. how to strike if you ever have to. And, you know, thank God I've never had to use Taekwondo. Right. Sure. And I think, you know, not only just knowing it, but also knowing, you know, having, as a Christian man, having the grace with people. If someone calls you something that's not, you're, you know, out of anger, you're not. Of course. So I think that helps immensely, you know, ultimately, you know, having. Big need for that. Mm -hmm. Big need for that. I think you'll you'll. I think that will really bring a lot of comfort to parents mm -hmm. with that. And I pray blessing upon your business and your ministry, man. We got. I'm going to ask you to do the last things. We only got 30 seconds. Got it. Quick. Okay. Somebody's somebody's watching. There's people watching now. People are going to listen to this. They might be driving 11:30 at night and turn on WYSL. Yeah. 30 seconds. You only got 30 seconds. In your in your words and your way, explain the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ to those listening. Yeah. So the. The first thing I think is John three sixteen mm -hmm. that um, for God so loved the world he gave his only son that if we believe in him we'll be saved. 
And I think that, you know, obviously if you're still searching, find someone, you know, be with someone that, you know, can encourage you. Obviously, you know, it's a, you know, what we, even the pastors talk about, it's like once you decide to be a Christian, it doesn't necessarily get easier, but you have that hope and you have that peace. Awesome. Great. I want to, I want to connect that with something I just heard. It was a beautiful, beautiful, profound truth. This gentleman was saying this, Jesus never once promised happiness. Never once did he say you'll be happy. What he did promise is peace. Yeah. And that's what you will get. Peace that passes understanding when you know the true and living God Amen. through the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and believe in the work of the cross, death, burial, and resurrection. Thanks, man. Those of you who are watching, listening later on, thank you for supporting Rescue and Revive Ministries here in Kenya. We have people in Kenya right now uh, viewing on our Facebook Live. We're so thankful for your prayers financial support. We have the Follow the Cloud event coming up. That's our open air service at the Spencerport Fireman Exempt Gazebo. Saturday, June 29th, noon to three, food fellowship. We've got a couple great speakers. Uh, we have a worship band uh, playing as well. Pray for the weather that day. We're, we're praying that people will hear the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping us to rescue the lost and revive the saved with the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great day, a great night.